Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and we've got a character who's kind of working at this point, and with tile mapping and scrolling and everything, it's starting to look pretty good. So I put out a poll on my site to just see what people would like to see next, and overwhelmingly people said they want more states for the player. So we're actually going to start off with a slide state, and just a little warning, sliding is actually incredibly complex, so this is going to be a bit of a long one. Additionally, throughout this video, you're going to see how we're starting to strain against the constraints of our player controller. The problem is that we're just trying to do too much in one script, and so this is the last video in which we'll be working with this version of the player controller. We're going to do a refactor that pulls out some of the logic into other scripts, making this much more modular and viable long term. That said, we've got a lot to do, so let's get started. Now before we get started on sliding, I just have a couple of things people have been asking me about with regards to jumping. First of all, some people are finding, especially when they jump from a high height, that they're clipping through the ground. If that's the case, click on your player's rigid body and make sure that you set collision detection to continuous. This costs more resource-wise, but is pretty standard for a player. You want to always be checking for collisions, and often that will solve the clipping problem. The second is this. You'll notice that when I jump, I can walk into walls, and that's just because I have friction on my player. The way to fix this is simply let's go to our assets folder where we can create a new folder. Let's call this materials as we'll be making a few throughout the course of this series. And we're going to right click create and under 2D you can make a physics material. I'm just going to call mine slippery and essentially all we want to do here is make sure that our friction is zero. Now we can apply this material to our player's rigid body in this material box here. With that done we'll now be nice and slippery and we won't be able to stick to walls anymore. All right let's make this slide happen. Because sliding is so complex, we're going to set things up so that we can test at various points throughout this video to make sure that you're staying on track. So our first step here is going to be to create the animation and trigger it in our script. So let's just drag our animation pane up here. Make sure you're clicked on the sprite and then we can create a new animation. I'm just going to call this one slide. Now if you're using Brolove's generic character pack, we're going to be working in the second pack here. And we're actually going to be starting on slide number 11 through to 16. If I click on 17, you can see that he's starting to get up there and we don't want that. We can then just expand this a little bit so that it plays out with a couple of frames for each. And this one will not be looping. We're just going to sit on that last frame so you don't need to duplicate it or anything like that. That said, we do need to go into our animations folder and make sure that slide has its loop time turned off. With that, we can put our animation panel away and head to our animator. Let's just start by creating a parameter for this. This is going to be a bool called is sliding, which I'll drag to the top here. We can then create our two transitions going in and out. And for the transition going in, we'll just set it so that whenever is sliding is true. And then on the way out, it'll be when is sliding is false. That said, we want this to be immediate. So let's turn off our exit time and duration. All right, that's done. Now we're ready to get coding. Let's head into our player script. For the moment, we're just setting up our animation, but let's create a header here anyways, as there's going to be a lot of slide variables. So let's begin with a public float, which is just going to be the slide duration. Next, we'll need to track our state, so let's make a private bool for is sliding, and then we'll also have a private float for our slide timer. This is going to be what counts down the time that we're actually sliding, so we know when 0.6 seconds are over. At this point, we can head down to update. And here, we just want to call handle slide all the time. And then in fixed update, we'll create a gate here, making it so that we only handle movement if is sliding is false. That said, we're leaving handle jumping out of this, which means we can jump to abort our slide. All right, now let's go ahead and create that handle slide method. Here, we're just going to give some logic for what will happen if is sliding is true. So in that case, we want our slide timer to always count down and we'll use time delta time for that. And then if our slide timer ever gets to zero or below zero, we'll make sure that we turn is sliding to false. However, how do we actually start the slide? That's going to be our next statement. So here, if is grounded is true and run is pressed and our move inputs y is less than negative 0.1, meaning we're pushing downward and we're not already in a slide. You can see here that this is starting to get a little silly and this is part of why we're going to be refactoring down the road. Now if that stupidly long string of checks proves true then we want to make sure that his sliding gets set true and we're going to reset our slide timer to our full slide duration. Now we just need to handle our animations. So let's go to that method where we can tell our anim that it needs to set the bool for is sliding and here we're just going to mirror the is sliding bool that we created already. So if that's true it'll go to true and if not it won't. Now the only problem is right now there could be a situation where we're setting the is sliding bool 
but idle, walking, or running are also getting called. And so we need to make sure that all of those now have an extra check so that we can only go into idle, walking, or running if we are not in a sliding state. We've reached our first checkpoint, so let's go ahead and give this a try. And now, if you are running and pressing down at the same time, our player goes into a slide. Excellent. Now, it would sure be nice if he actually went somewhere instead of just playing an animation. So let's give him some velocity. Fortunately, getting our player moving is actually quite easy. In our slide settings, let's just add a public float for our slide speed, and then we can go down to handle slide. Now, if is sliding is true, we just want to tell our rigid body that its linear velocity is equal to, and here we'll have to construct a vector too, but on the X, we can just do our slide speed multiplied by our facing direction, and then we're going to let gravity do its thing on the Y, so we can just use rb.linearvelocity.y. All right, and now if I run and press down, we slide, we actually go somewhere, and I can even cancel it mid-slide by pressing jump. That said, here's the problem. If I slide and just continuously hold down, down, and slide, even if I jump, I'll just stay in like slide mode for like forever. Additionally, I can flip when I'm in the middle of sliding, and I think I'd like to gate that so that we can't change direction mid-slide. So the way we're going to solve this is by creating a brief lock at the end of the slide where it just has a moment before another input can be pressed. So here, we'll have something called a slide stop duration, which will just be that pause after a slide. And then we're also going to make a private float here, which will be our slide stop timer, which will just count down that time. We'll also just make a bool called slide input locked, which will just keep track of that brief time where we're not allowed to input a new slide. So now in update, let's go to our flip here and make this conditional so that only if we are not sliding are we able to flip. That'll fix that one problem. All right, so in handle slide, let's go inside of this is sliding block here. So we're currently in a sliding state. However, our timer has run out. So we're about to leave the state, but before we do that, we'll make sure that our slide stop timer gets set to our slide stop duration. Now we can handle that operation by just saying if our slide stop timer is greater than zero, so it's still counting down, First of all, we want it to count down. So make sure that our slide stop timer subtracts the change in time. The other thing we'll do, and this is optional, is we'll tell our rigid body that we want its X value to be set to zero while we're in this state. This will give us kind of a sharp pause at the end of the slide. Now we're ready to use our slide input locked pool. So first of all, let's make sure that we can only enter our sliding state if there's all these other things, but also our slide input is not locked. And then as soon as we do enter it, we wanna make sure that slide input gets locked. Finally, you know that slide stop timer greater than zero block we did up ahead that's counting down? Well, what happens when it gets to zero? That's what this if statement's gonna do. So if it does get to be less than zero, well, in that case, we wanna make sure that our slide input locked gets set to false. Now, I just wanna add one last condition here, not just that our slide stop timer ends, but also that we release the down button. So to do that, we'll just check if the move inputs Y is greater than negative 0.1, meaning we're not pressing it down anymore. All right, so now the slide's working quite nicely. I can't flip left or right mid slide, though I can jump to get out of it. I also can't slide forever. I have to actually release the button and wait for the timer before I can slide again. That said, you'll notice our slide isn't actually doing its job. Even though it looks like we're getting down low here, our collider is still the same size, and so it's still restricting us from going into this actual cavern here. So what we need to do next is dynamically resize our collider while sliding so that we can get through gaps like this. So first thing we'll need is a reference to our collider. I'll do a public capsule collider 2D. If you're using a box collider, you can type that, and we'll just call it player collider. We'll then come down into our slide settings, and I'm just gonna add an extra space here since these are a little different, and we'll make a public float called slide height. Now, unfortunately, the collider always centers itself on the player, and we want it to move downward so that it's always at the bottom portion of the player. And so here we're gonna need to keep track of our offset as well. We'll then also have a float here for our normal height and a vector 2 for our normal offset. Now let's just find some values for these variables. First of all, if I click on my capsule collider currently, you'll notice that I've got some pretty crazy decimals here. I'm just going to round these up to a single decimal place, or none at all, as I think that'll be a lot easier to handle. We can then use those values as our normal values for our height and offset. Now figuring out the values we need during our slide is a little trickier, and to be honest, you could just guessed for now is we're going to change these later anyways. That said, you could click on your player sprite and drag the slide sprite in here and then use that to go ahead and dynamically resize the capsule yourself to get an idea of just how tall it is. 
Now that those variables are all set, let's head into our code and actually put them to work. So here we'll come down into handle slide. Just to keep track of what's going on, let's add a comment here. So this block here is if we are done sliding, and if that's the case, then we want to set our collider to normal. Now let's come down to where we actually start the sliding, and here we're going to want to set our collider to its slide height. Now neither of those methods actually exist, so let's go ahead and create them. We'll do set collider normal first of all. Here we'll just make it so that our player collider's size is set to, here we'll need to do a new vector too, which just gets our player collider size x, as we don't want to change that at all. But then for our y, we're going to use our normal height. Then we can set our offset, and this one's nice and easy because we already have a vector 2 to set there, and we'll just set it to our normal offset. Now we can just copy paste that method, we'll make a set collider slide method here, and we'll just change the height to our slide height, and the offset to our slide offset. The only setup here is to head into our player script and make sure that we drag our collider into the player collider box. Now when we get into test mode, I'm just going to drag my game over here so we can see what we're playing, but I'm going to have a larger scene view so that we can kind of watch what our collider is doing. You'll notice now when I slide that my collider is in fact shrinking whenever I'm in slide state and then it goes back to normal again at the end. All right, I think we're ready to test this. All right, and you'll notice that that is kind of failing miserably and that's just because my collider while sliding is much too large to fit through the gap. So let's just tweak those slide numbers a little and there we go. It's well, kind of working. We can now slide into the gap here. However, there's still a little bit of a problem. One is that I'm standing up inside here, and if you zoom in, you'll notice that there just isn't enough room for our collider when we finish here. So we're gonna need to fix that. And what we need to do is actually check to see if we're able to stand up or not. And if not, we're gonna have to go into a crouch state. Now the need for a crouch state means we need a crouch animation. So let's drag this animation pane up here. Let's click on our player sprite and we're then gonna create a new animation. Let's call this one crouch. And we can go ahead and head into our graphics here. We're gonna be using number 62 through 64. I'll just spread them out a tiny bit. And again, because we're just gonna sit on that last frame, we don't need to duplicate it or loop or anything like that. That said, we do need to go to our animations folder and make sure that crouch is set to not loop. All right, in our animator, we'll just drag crouch into place here. We'll make a bool for is crouching and drag that up top. We'll then create transitions going in and out of crouch. Make sure that we head to crouch when is crouching is true. We're gonna leave when is crouching is false, and as often as the case, we're gonna have no exit time or duration. Now, actually getting the crouch check going actually takes a little bit of work, and you may notice that our sliding and crouching is now taking up a whole bunch of our player script. This is just another reason why we need to refactor so we can pull that logic out. That's coming next video. All right, let's go ahead and make a header here for our crouch check, and we'll start by having a public transform, which is gonna be our head check. We're gonna need a radius, so we'll use a float for that, and we'll just set this to about 0.2 for now, though we'll tweak that in the inspector. So let's create a helper method called try stand up, which is just gonna to check to see if there's room for us to get up or not at the end of a slide. We'll start by creating a local variable, a bool called can stand up, and similar to how we did our ground check, we're gonna use a physics 2D overlap circle to check around our head to see if there's a ceiling there. The circle will originate at our head checks position, It'll use our head check radius, and it's just going to be looking for ground layer, as our ceiling is part of our ground. Now if it turns out that we can stand up, then we want to set our collider to normal, and we also want to tell our anim that its bool, for is crouching, should be set to false. You'll notice I wrote true here, that is a mistake. However, if there's no room to stand up, that's our else statement, we're going to set the collider to slide. And then we can copy this line above here, which I'm finally correcting, and we'll make it so that crouching becomes true in this case. Now then, in handle slide, if we are done sliding, instead of automatically going back to our normal collider, we're going to try to stand up, which will only set the normal collider if there's room to stand. Now we're almost there, but we still need to set our animations, so let's head to handle animations. Here we'll make a local bool called is crouching, and that's just going to check our anim and get its bool for is crouching. So now we can just come down here with all of our idle walking and running and add another condition so that we can only do those if we are not in a crouching state. All right, so we do need to create a head check. We're gonna do this like we did with our ground check by making an empty game object, which we'll call head check. And then I'm just gonna drag it into place around my player's head. Now we're working pretty blindly here and it'd be nice to have some visual representation of what we're doing. So let's go into our code, head to our on draw gizmo selected, and we're just gonna add a new one. 
This one will use the color of blue. And again, like with our ground check, we'll draw a wire sphere, except this one will be from our head check position and use our head check radius. Now when I click on my player and turn on my gizmos, it is actually showing up. That said, you'll notice it's really hard to see here. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit to give us a better view and you'll notice that yes, there is in fact a little tiny blue circle there. I'm gonna make it a little larger and kind of play with the positioning, but again, we're actually gonna change this once we actually test our slide, so don't get too hung up on getting this just perfect right now. Now don't forget to drag your head check into that box on the player, and then we can test. And we're gonna be really close here, but you'll notice when I get under here that I'm still stuck in idle. And if you look in the animator, is crouching is not being set to true. And that's just because of our head check location. Currently, we've placed the head check at the standing height, but he actually checks for the ceiling while he's down in his slide. So I'm just gonna move this down to more around his chest and that should fix the problem. Now I'll slide out of there and now when I go in, you'll notice that my player is actually crouching as he should. It may take a couple tries to get this just right, but it should work now. That said, you'll notice some strange behavior. One, we don't have a crouch walk, so that looks a little funny. But also when we slide out of here, we don't go back to our slide animation. We're staying in crouch. So let's fix that next. So the reason we're not entering crouch here is just because of the fact that all of our crouch triggers, including the setting false, gets called in our try stand up method. And so we only call that right now at the very end of our slide. And so we're actually gonna go into update and call try stand up all the time. So our player will constantly check whether or not he's able to stand. And then at the top of that method, we're just going to add a check. So if we are sliding, and then we're just going to copy this anim line here that sets it false. So if we're in the middle of a slide, we don't want him to continue crouching. I'll then just add a return here, which will keep this from firing any other logic while we're in our slide. So now when we get in play mode, it's working. He crouches if we are under a ceiling. We're also able to run at it from the side and slide all the way through to the other side. This is working pretty nicely. You'd think we're done, but guess what? We're so close to having a crouch state here that we may as well add that last little bit of logic. Now to make the crouch work, we're gonna do all of our work here in the try stand up method. At the moment, our can stand up only works for sliding as it's checking if there is not a ceiling overhead. And what we wanna do is actually create something that we can use for crouching and sliding. So we're gonna make a bool called should crouch and it's just gonna use the same overlap circle check, but it's gonna use the positive version. So we should crouch if there's ground over our head, but we're also gonna make it so that that's not the only time we should crouch. We're gonna make it so that we should crouch if our move input for Y is less than negative 0.1, meaning we're pushing down. We'll then put an or statement here. So if we're pushing down or there's a ceiling above us, we should crouch. Then we'll just change this variable down here so that if we should not be crouching, we'll do the collider normal and turn off the crouching variable. And then we've got our else statement that does the opposite. All right, now when we get in the game, we can press down and our player is in fact crouching and this collider is getting smaller too. So in theory, we could dodge projectiles now. We're still able to slide as normal. And yes, we are able to walk and we don't have an animation for that, but that's okay. That's more than we're gonna do in this video. All right, I hope you found this one helpful. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be doing some refactoring to make this a lot more readable and able to build for the future. Again, hope to see you in that video. Until then though, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.